नमस्कार व्यूअर्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टीवी आई एम टीना झा योर वाचिंग पर्सपेक्टिव प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी इनोग्रेटेड द प्रायोरिटी सेक्शन ऑफ द दिल्ली गाजियाबाद मेरठ रीजनल रैपिड ट्रांजिट सिस्टम कॉरिडोर ऑन फ्राइडे द 17 किलोमीटर प्रायोरिटी सेक्शन ऑफ द दिल्ली गाजियाबाद मेरठ आरआरटीएस कॉरिडोर इज शेड्यूल्ड टू बी ओपन फॉर पैसेंजर्स ऑन द 21st ऑफ अक्टूबर द प्राइम मिनिस्टर वाज आल्सो सीन इंटरैक्टिंग विद स्कूल चिल्ड्रन एंड आल्सो द क्रू मेंबर्स ऑफ रैपिड एक्स ट्रेन नमो भारत connecting saibabad to duhai depot on board the train dedicating the namo bharat train to the people of india the prime minister said it it was a historic moment for the nation as it got its first rapid rail service and the prime minister also expressed delight at the transformation of rail services in india the prime minister asserted that namo bharat is a glimpse of india of the future and exemplifies the transformation of the nation with growing economic muscle So on this edition of perspective we'll talk about the significance of the rapid rail service in enhancing regional connectivity how different it is from the existing networks like the metro and how trains like the namo bharat and vande bharat are transforming the rail travel experience in india and for this we have a distinguished panel of guests joining us on the program i'm pleased to welcome mr sudendu jyoti sinha he is advisor infrastructure connectivity and electric mobility niti aayog thank you sir for your time welcome to the program next to him is mr koshal kumar sahu senior project officer transport asian development bank and he's also the team leader of the delhi merit rrts and we expect uh, mr jaydeep osd and eo joint secretary ministry of housing and urban affairs to join us shortly in the meanwhile let us begin the program today by getting perspectives from the two gentlemen who are joining us on this edition of perspective mr sinha to you first important day india gets its first rapid rail service your views on the significance of the rrts network for enhancing regional connectivity so i would say that definitely it is a red letter day it says a historic day in the entire you know mobility kind of uh, landscape of india that rrts has for the first time it has been positioned here so we are aware that you know urbanization is going on a very very fast pace as we move on we would be seeing that 2% of india's land mass that would be contributing 98% of gdp so basically it would be the urban centers that would be kind of driving the nation forward and in this urban centers when so much of population is around and mobility becomes a major major challenge how to develop the regional centers how to connect them to the to the main one and that is the central business district and all the other areas that is the challenge this rrts is a step forward you know there have been other steps but this is a landmark step in in achieving the mass rapid transport that is what the achievement is that is what the i would call it uh, the most significant aspect is in addition to that it is clean it is green it is of a cutting edge technology the operations and maintenance will be globally best all those things are you know additional and the very fact that the concept comes in that a mass rapid transport you know for you know kind of bringing people during the time to the city hub and then taking them back to their place of dormitory settlements and all those areas and at the same time you know also motivating the other small regions around it to grow on their own so the entire you know hub kind of thing a growth hub of urban center that is what this particular rapid transport system would be facilitating okay so let's let's take it you know a scale beyond a scale beyond mobility that it is going to develop the entire region as a growth hub for the country so before i proceed to mr sahu to understand the role of the adb if you could also highlight in terms of features how unique is the rrts we have the existing metro rail network which we call the lifeline of delhi today but if we now go or talk about the rrts in terms of features in terms of modern equipment how different is it going to be i would put it this way that you know this particular project had come to niti aayog for the first time in some time say end of 2018 that was the time when we were deliberating upon it we were also looking that what all options are there so there could be a brt corridor there could be extension of metro other options were also weighed against it and then we decided no this is what is going to be a kind of you know this is going going to be a leap frog into the into the mobility and then we opted for it and you rightly said a lot of features are there you see so whatever in whichever stream you can think of globally best it has been stretched over there so be it the 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 speed be it the security and safety parameters 
be it the quality of terminals, be it, of course, for women, of course, there is a, there is a reserved coaches have also been earmarked for it. So whatever parameters that you can think of, it is there. So you can, we can, if you say that metro is the lifeline, I would add on that this is the life breath for Delhi. So that okay. is what you can say. Okay, so it's going to enhance, uh, you know, ease of transport for at least the people of that area who commute to the national capital every day. Uh, but uh, w what has been the role of the ADB in the project is something we'll try and understand from Mr. Sahu. Mr. Sahu, you've been the team leader of the first uh, priority section that's been inaugurated by the Prime Minister. Tell us about what crucial role, what, what are the activities that the ADB has been involved with in this project? Yeah, so ADB, uh, in fact, the board approved this project in, in uh, 2019 uh, and uh, with the motive that this will, in fact, improve the connectivity, uh, not only, you know, inside the Delhi, but also to the regions like this is connecting Meerut and there is also plan for a new corridors. So, in fact, there are three property corridors have been planned. One is in Meerut and that is going to connect the Gurgaon and SNB, um, uh, pass through SNB and third is Sonipat and Panipat. So, uh, so uh, with uh, talking about the experience on this project, uh, I, I, I must say that our priority is about the decarbonization. One of the main aspects of EDB's financing in India is decarbonization, in fact, of transport system. So, it is a very major objective. In fact, our climate change commitment uh, because of, uh, we have signed the Paris Agreement and we have in fact committed to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emission and also to meet our climate change uh, commitments. Uh, second thing is that ADB is also one of our operational priorities uh, is basically uh, uh, to, to support government of India in terms of to, to tackle the challenges of urbanization. So, this is one of the project which uh, in fact encourages people to live near their places and access to the basic city services using the RRTS network. So, suppose if people are living in Meerut, they can access, uh, they can reach Delhi within one hour and come to the office. In fact, they can access to the education services and, uh, and also uh, the medical facilities. Uh, the most important thing is that the, the, it's the, the RRTS uh, system has planned uh, good, uh, uh, I must say that uh, uh, last mile connectivity solutions. Uh, so that the people who are living, you know, not only uh, along the corridor, but also uh, in the catchment area of the corridor, uh, or who are living away from the from the system, they can use those last mile connectivity solutions to 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 access this Delhi Merit RTS corridor, and you know, uh, and and they, they will of course with the with the practice they will uh, leave uh, habit of using their private vehicles, and this will uh, significant, uh, significantly reduce the air pollution in the city. Become. The third thing is that, that ADB has supported uh, profoundly is uh, about transit oriented development and uh, value capture financing plans of NCRTC. Uh, we should also thank uh, NCRTC management for completing this project in time. Uh, in fact, the priority section was uh, scheduled, uh, in fact, this is completed much before the schedule. Uh, for that, the entire team is, you know, uh, deserve congratulations and appreciation. And I think as today Prime Minister said that, said that the next section is going to be commissioned very soon and because of the pace we have observed in this project. So, uh, talking on the transit on development and value capture financing, ADB has in fact uh, uh, supported uh, NCRTC team uh, with grant funds to, to come up with a plan, transit on development plan and they have identified four special development area uh, along this RITS corridor that will be in, in fact used to generate non fare box revenue and over the period of time, uh, it will support NCRTC uh, in terms of generating non fare box revenue and make their operations sustainable. So, right now, uh, they have done many good jobs and uh, one, of, one of the things is that they have established one uh, innovation center in their Duhai depot, which is one of a kind. So, they have used 5D business, uh, building information modeling system to in fact design entire system on, on BIM platform. And now they are moving towards 6D. It means now they are stepping one more step. So they will use the entire building information modeling system uh, for, for asset management. So that will also improve the efficiency of this organization. The third important thing is that, uh, that uh, this uh, organization is also, uh, in fact, thinking for women. So uh, today we learned that more than 50 percent of the staff uh, those are involved in operation are women staff. So, this is also shows that how much the organization care about, you know, women centric uh, development and, and, and ADB, in fact, the Japan uh, uh, Fund for uh, Resilient Asian Pacific has, in fact, uh, 
has a, we have given a grant of three million to uh, to NCITC uh, to come up with uh, uh, plans and proposals for not only for women uh, empowerment, uh, but also to generate employment opportunities. Sure, we will try. We will try and uh, discuss this aspect because this is something that has been, uh, uh, you know, one of the focus areas of India during its G20 presidency. Also, how we we are trying to move away from women empowerment to women-led development, and that that's something that we have been trying to. Uh, uh, tell other countries also to adapt. So we'll discuss that aspect in just a bit. But c coming back to the transformation that we are seeing, uh, Mr. Sinha, and, and uh, since he spoke about uh, transit-oriented development, as cities are witnessing, uh, experiencing rapid growth and, and densely populated areas such as uh, Merit, how, how crucial is the role of this trans transit-oriented policy? Do we have a national policy, if you could explain to us and our viewers? So you see, transit-oriented development mainly means that you see, mobility movement is more important than the vehicle. So the concept earlier was the roads are made for the vehicles. Okay, so that is what with that concept we used to move forward. Now, now the transition transformation is that the concept, new concept is that no, roads are meant for the movement. So the net idea should be that if a road, how should we design, how should we kind of plan our mobility so that the throughput that is the, num the number of people who could use that road for a maximum period of time, that could be enhanced. So that is what the, the concept of transit-oriented development is. Let's put it this way that suppose in a, I will, I'm just giving you a hypothetical situation. So suppose Connaught Place, we are just near that, Connaught Place is there. If you put on a, on a given day, let's say on the outer circle, if you are just putting cards only, if uh, there are only cards, so you will be able to clear some 7,000 people at any given moment of time will be in the car. But let's say on the same day, at that moment of time, there are only buses. You will be clearing close to 27, 28,000 people. You can imagine. So how do we plan this thing? You see, basically the roads, the design, the entire planning has to be oriented in a way so that transit-oriented development is supported, not that only vehicles are supported. So the movement is to be supported. And in that direction, this particular intervention, that is rapid rail transport system, this is a step ahead. So if I just take you to the Global Move Summit, of course, it is slightly, you know, a little um, earlier it happened in 2018 in September, 7th of September it had happened. And Prime Minister was himself in that Move Summit, where he laid down that how the mobility of India would be. So he laid down seven C's, he said that this should be clean, this should be of the cutting edge, this should be congestion free, this should be convenient, it should be common. He laid out the parameters. And if you see, if you try to fit in, then you know, this particular intervention, this fits in, this kind of supports all of them. The electrification is there, it's a clean kind of thing. So, and the, and the most, you know, as I would say, I would sing for this project because it has been completed, this part of it has been completed. The target time was four years and it has been completed short of it. So little, you know, earlier than that. That is what the thing is. In a big ticket project like this, if we are able to maintain our timelines, that is the greatest achievement, I would say. Because then the time and the cost overruns are kind of captured and, and the intended impact of that particular project, that is achieved. That is what this project is. So special for You're us. right. So how, how did we, you know, manage to finish the project before time is something that I'll uh, get Mr. Jaydeep on in just a while. But uh, uh, Mr. Sahu, how important is this policy, transit-oriented development policy for developing economies? Because, uh, you know, as Mr. Sinha was suggesting, it's not the vehicle movement that's important, it's the mobility of people. And especially for a country like India, we are now the largest populated country. We have to ensure that progress doesn't mean the number of cars on the road. We have to ensure that progress is all about public infrastructure. We have to strengthen public infrastructure, and this is one step towards that. So how is ADB uh, supporting institutions like the NCRTC and other bodies that are involved in such projects? Yeah, uh, this is a very relevant, relevant question. In fact, uh, ADB has been, in, uh, has been involved in, uh, uh, in uh, supporting organizations like NCRTC in developing plans for transit development development. So uh, not only NCRTC, we are also uh, helping uh, 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 MMRDA in Mumbai and also in Bangalore Metro Rail Corporation to develop plans for tra transit development. And as your question about 
that why how it is relevant to for developing countries so this is one of the means you know uh, to to uh, to to bring people close to the transit network and so that they can use uh, the, uh, the 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 transit network while committing uh, to their office places and also coming back to to their home and one of the important aspect is that you increase the floor area ratio it's a bit technical but it increases the floor area ratio that can be saleable and part of this goes to the metro organizations so it is kind of linked with with uh, has a linkage with sustainability so if they get some money so they don't have to increase the fare uh, fares and it will ultimately help the people those are using the system so these were relevant in fact most of the state have agreed to that and they have uh, come up with their policies state centric policies for transit to development in nagpur they are in fact uh, getting uh, uh, some uh, revenue out of this uh, uh, from because of the study policy and they are getting the share uh, part of a uh, we call it vcf value capture financing okay so okay so at this point let me uh, welcome mr jaydeep osd and eo joint secretary ministry of housing and urban affairs on this edition of perspective thank you sir for your time welcome to the program apologies for beginning the discussion before you joined us but before you uh, you know uh, came on the panel we were talking about how significant this project is and how it's going to be a game changer especially uh, when we talk about regional connectivity your thoughts on how it's defining the new journey of naya bharat as the prime minister stressed today and uh, and some of the challenges that uh, we may have faced uh, in uh, developing this project particularly because it 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 happens in a very very densely populated area uh this project is very very important and in my opinion it is a momentous occasion when uh, prime minister uh, modi ji launched this uh, one where uh, this uh, namo bharat train and it is definitely it uh, it is this this concept is different we started with metro system and we have a very very huge network of metro system around 895 km that is within the city we has we have expanded our metro network in delhi if you take example it is going up to noida and gurgaon but for uh, regional connectivity the towns which are situated 80 or 100 km away from delhi if they can be connected with faster connectivity so that people can decongest delhi they can start living in those areas if we are getting this kind of facility so definitely if uh, this train which is once this section is completed it take 2 km this uh, journey will be completed within within an hour and the best feature of any kind of train system whether you take mumbai or dmrc or any other metro system the main thing is this passenger knows that after 2 minutes 3 minutes 5 minutes i will get next train the number 2 point is the person is getting world class comfort in train you get a very very comfortable air conditioning system your uh, this uh, this is a this is a completely uh, uh, this is this this works on a on a dedicated route there is no problem of jam congestion which happens in road sector but the one question that comes to the mind of common passengers it's going to open up for uh, passengers on the 21st is with the metro the the one good thing was that it was affordable will the rrts be affordable to the common man yes uh, when metro started the same question came that it is not affordable as compared to bus now if you see in uh, delhi alone 7 million passengers are traveling daily it is gradually it will gradually increase and it will gradually attract passenger because there are many other factors which attracts people to choose a particular mode it is not only fare it is your convenience it is your punctuality all these factors it comes so it depends upon individual and this process takes time initially we may not get that much of rider but definitely it will become a lifeline for complete region in times to come so this was the priority section what are the other uh, uh, wings that, this, that will follow uh, this is a, i will just tell you about this project this is a 82 km project connecting delhi to modipuram and it has uh, uh, this priority section was 17 km from saibaba to dohai rest of the section will be completed by june 2025 
it has got 22 kilometer around 22 kilometer of metro network in Meerut. So, in some of these stations will be four stations in Meerut will be RRTS stations, rest of these stations will be metro station within Meerut city. So, this will be going to be a game changer as far as this regional connectivity is concerned. And once this, this network is expanded to other parts of NCR, then you will you can you can have a seamless connectivity from uh, Meerut to say up to Alwar or up to Panipat. So, that is going to happen and uh, I, I am uh, confident that this, uh, this will be just like Mumbai suburban system, Delhi metro, Calcutta metro, this will be just a lifeline for the public okay, in okay. times to come. Okay, Mr. Sinha, the good thing is it comes as a major milestone in India's uh, yes. public transportation sector and especially for the NCR region because it's also going to decongest Delhi. Uh, but if I would like to understand from you, one good thing about this project has been it, has, it was completed before time as uh, Mr. Sao uh, explained, three months before time if I believe. But uh, what are some of the challenges that uh, such big projects may have to face? And especially when we talk about such densely populated areas, are there any issues related to land acquisition? Are there issues related to traffic management, especially when we are talking uh, during the construction phase? Uh, if you could take us through the challenges that uh, the projects have to face during so, their completion. So, so you, you rightly said, you see, and that, that, that is why this project becomes all the more special. <clears throat> Normally what happens is that if you are making a green field project in some, you know, remote area, then uh, it's, it's slightly isolated and probably the kind of challenges there are different. But if you are making it at the thick of the population, then, then it becomes all the more, you know, pressing. Yeah. Because you have to ensure that the, at the same time, the traffic also continues. You are not going to stop it for, for the, uh, for till the time of the completion. So, that is one thing that you have to go for it. So, that is one thing. In addition to that, of course, you know, normal challenges are, you know, that, uh, that the funding has to be, you know, a sustained basis has to be there. And what, uh, uh, what uh, my partner said right now, the BIM, that is the building information modeling, this is something amazing also. Let's, let's try to translate it in simple terms. When I say Gati Shakti, that means it is synergizing all the, it is synergizing initiative for all the uh, in infrastructure. It's a whole of government approach. So the whole government of India team is working on a project, let's put it this way. Now when I say building information modeling, then this, the entire project, the team is working on that project. So if Gati Shakti is to all infrastructure types, to a particular project, it is building information modeling. Let us say four or four of us are there and the RRTS is coming up. All of us should have complete visibility how it is coming up. So that because I may have a specific responsibility, you may have another one. So we have to see that if any shortfall is there, another one should be able to pull it fast. That is the reason. That's why I said that, that, uh, that the technology that has been embedded into it, the new innovative techniques that they have followed into it. That is the reason why this is so unique. In addition to that, let me put it, let me just reveal, reveal to you that the time of operation would be from 6 to 11 o'clock. This is the time of operation. But they are also planning, not maybe at some later date, that from 11 till the morning, you know, it will be providing cargo services also. Can you imagine that the milk and the bread and the vegetables and so many things can be brought from those areas and moved on to those areas because of this particular network. Okay, uh, Mr. So, Jaydeep, futuristic projects were announced even earlier. But what are the reformative measures that have been taken over the past several years that we are seeing the same Prime Minister who is laying the foundation stone is also inaugurating the project and is ensuring that it is, uh, you know, dedicated to the nation. So, what has been the change in the reformative measures in policies, number one, and also in change in the mindsets because that's all the more important. Uh, as far as such uh, uh, project of such magnitude is concerned, as mentioned by my colleague, that uh, first of all that funding, there was no problem of funding for this project. Uh, it never waited for funding. Then as he mentioned that from conception stage, what is happening in other metro projects, we are planning our system that there are many components in this metro like your RRTS kind of system. There is a civil structure kind of thing, 
then system part is there, signaling is there, rolling stock is there and different component has different time cycles. Then we have to, we have planned our project in such a manner that whenever that item is required, it is available. Suppose that if it is planned in a manner that civil construction work is over, rolling stock takes two and half year. But this has been planned like this that we have plans that we should open this priority section on such and such date. Everything was in place, whether it is rolling stock, whether it is signaling, whether it is civil structure, whether it is track or any other electrical and mechanical system. So, these are the important things that how we plan our system and the close monitoring system at organization level, at state level, at ministry level, at central government level, it is monitored regularly and we monitor milestone wise that, that this project is for 5 years. We cannot see that ok, we will see after 5 years. No, we have to see what milestone we have set right. at the time of sanction. Then we see whether we have achieved, is there any slip, then if there is going to be some slip then corrective measures are taken at all levels. Project of this magnitude has we have to set some some milestones for those projects otherwise these projects will not get completed. So, these we, transformative steps that have uh, made the kind of difference that we are seeing today. Another uh, aspect that, that makes this development story all the more different is what we were uh, uh, talking about earlier is uh, the, the crucial role of women. So, how uh, we ensure that each of these development projects that we plan the women play a centric role in that. We have seen today as well in visuals, the Prime Minister, how he described uh, women being the central pillar of this project as well and uh, several other projects that are lined up as part of this project. But the good thing is that India is ensuring that from talking about women empowerment, we are not talking about women led development. Because when we look at Vision 2047, we have to ensure that half of our demography is actively participating in that development journey. Uh, Time allows me to take up only that much on this edition of Perspective. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program today, sharing your thoughts, your views with us and our viewers. And to you viewers, thank you very much for your time as well. Take care.